<laughs> and with thunder, I think the Spirit is making its presence known today. This is Pentecost Sunday, so it is fitting that we should have thundering and roaring outside. Welcome to worship. As I said, this is Pentecost. Um, we are also celebrating affirmation of baptism at 11 o'clock today, so it's a full day of celebrations and festival. And so with uh, thank you for all the good music this morning, and we'll have some more a little later on to join in that festival theme. Let's pray. Gracious God, we come today to be festive, to live in the love that you blessed us with in your spirit. And may that love, may that spirit that live inside us move us to do, to work, to be of service. May we make change in our world. Amen. And I invite you to please sing with us the gathering hymn. Please stand if you are able. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Let us pray. Mighty God, you breathe life into our bones, and your spirit brings truth to the world. Send us this spirit, transform us by your truth, and give us languages to proclaim your gospel. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. A reading from the second chapter of Acts. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. 
All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all of these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language, Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Ferga and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own language, we, languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams, even upon my slaves, both men and women. In these days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. A reading from the eighth chapter of Romans. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now, and not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, 
groan inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words, and God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 15th and 16th chapters. Jesus said, when the, advocates, when the Advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father and the Spirit of truth who comes from the Father, he will testify on my behalf. You also are to testify because you have been with me from the beginning. I did not say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you. But now I am going to him who sent me, yet none of you asks me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the advocate will not come to you, but if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment about sin, because they do not believe in me, about righteousness, because I am going to the Father, and you will see me no longer, and about judgment, because the ruler of this world has been condemned. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own but will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. If there's any kids here this morning, we'll have a children's message. On Pentecost, receiving the Spirit. And then we got a picture of Jesus teaching his disciples. And I got a picture of Jesus being baptized. And then I got a picture of Jesus calling his disciples and, and gathering them around to follow him. And we're going to try and put these kind of in order. So, which do you think happened first? Any idea? No? That one, yes. Jesus is baptized. And then these two look pretty similar. This one's him asking his disciples to follow him, and this one's him teaching him. So which do you think he did first? Ask them to follow, join him or teach them? Well, I say he asked them to follow him first. Then he did what? Teach. Yeah. And then they received the Spirit. See, kind of like that. Then they received it. And what we see in this story is that Jesus first received the Spirit, and then he taught and called friends together, and he taught them about God, and then they received the Spirit. And you know what? They called other people together, and they taught them about God. And this has happened for generation upon generation. And 
It's what we do because the Jesus did that for the disciples, and then the disciples did that for us. And so Pentecost isn't something that happens a long, long time ago. It's something that happens for us all the time because every time that we can talk to another person and teach them about Jesus, like Jesus taught the disciples who taught other disciples who taught us, we carry on Pentecost. We carry on what the Spirit did. Okay, and that's our story for today, and that's our good news. Let's pray. Repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for the disciples who learned from Jesus how to receive your love and spirit and then share it with others. Help us to do the same. Amen. Thanks. You can have a seat. Pentecost Sunday is a celebration of who we are as a church, what it means to be Christ's followers. It is a launching point. We launch on Pentecost Sunday what it means to live as followers of Jesus. Today we are going to be affirming uh, the baptism, it's a public act that three young men and one young woman will uh, do today to become adult members of this congregation. And they will be entrusted with the blessings and the responsibilities of being a disciple of Jesus. And it's fitting that we would do this on Pentecost, the day that the disciples first received the Holy Spirit in their lives and that guidance that has carried from generation to generation to generation, that today these confirmants receive the Holy Spirit in the laying on of hands and blessings from their family and friends and sponsors and congregation. Pentecost is also a time when people... It comes, it comes generally around the end of May, the beginning of June. And it's when people tend to check out of church. We tend to pull back, change our schedules um, and our routines. And it really doesn't feel like a launching. It kind of feels like a closing, doesn't it? I mean, it feels more like a like a commencement. There's lots of commencement services going on this time of year. Graduations. A lot of people think of confirmation as graduation from church. So we commence. Problem is, is we're misunderstanding what commencement means. To commence does not mean to end. To commence a commencement service is an announcement of a beginning. To commence is to begin. That's what it means. So today we remember and recognize the commencement of the church. What comes next is what today is about. This isn't an end, it isn't a new, it is a new beginning. We are commencing as a church. Pentecost. I remember in high school uh, when the cheerleaders would lead fans and they would yell, we've got spirit, yes we do, we've got spirit, how about you? And then the people on the other side, opposing team, would cry out as loud as they can, we've got spirit, yes we do, we've got spirit, how about you? And we'd go back and forth getting louder and more expressive in our spirit to beat the other team. 
Today is a day that we give a shout out to the Spirit. Believing in Jesus Christ and what goes along with him is a norm of Sunday morning worship. But when it comes to speaking about Pentecost and the Holy Spirit, we aren't so clear. We aren't so brave. We tend to whisper. We got spirit. Yes, we do. We got spirit. How about you? Yay. We don't shout the spirit. We're familiar with the name. We know that the spirit is the third person of the Trinity. But do we confidently say, we've got spirit? Yes, we do. We've got spirit. How about you, neighbor? Do you have spirit? Let me tell you about the spirit. Pentecost brings to mind this story, this wild, crazy story of fire and wind and thunder and violent storms. We think of the speaking of tongues. And that unusual experience which all these foreigners were able to hear and understand the noble things of God in their own language without an interpreter. But there's more to Pentecost than this amazing story, although it's pretty cool. The Holy Spirit moved the disciples from sadness to joy that day, moved them from survival to new life that day. The Holy Spirit empowered Jesus' followers, and that power continues to this day. The timing is one in which the ascension had occurred. Jesus had gone and was gone from what the followers of Jesus had known. As far as he was, they were concerned, he was gone, gone, no more, is no more. They were in this desolate, lonely place in which they were in Jerusalem praying and hiding and befuddled and grieving. And the time was the Hebrew Harvest Festival known as Pentecost. Pentecost existed before Christians. Uh, Pentecost is the 50-day fest- harvest festival, spring harvest festival, which seems weird in our culture because we don't really harvest in the spring. But there's spring harvest festival 50 days after Passover. That was Pentecost. Annual event of fun and festivities. And so these disciples who are locked up in this room hiding and in this crazy befuddled state decide to sneak out into the crowds and be anonymous in a crowd. Maybe get some food and, and maybe take a sigh of enjoyment and try to move on with life. Basically, these followers had no idea what they were doing, or what they were supposed to do, or what Jesus meant in his last directive to be his witnesses to the ends of the earth. So suddenly they're alone, and then they're not. Because the Spirit is with them. And when the Spirit came upon them, Jesus was with them forever, present They're energized by an invisible presence and know Jesus is with them. Jesus is with us forever. The late Dr. Albert Outler, he's a Methodist theologian and scholar, said Pentecost's consequence was that Jesus became alive again and powerful and forever thereafter present wherever two or three are gathered in his name. And then he said, Jesus was no longer a has-been. What happened back then is made contemporary to us now 
by the Spirit because we've got Spirit. That is the gift given to us. The Holy Spirit makes the manger and the cross and the empty tomb all relevant to us today. We can interpret and understand meaning to these events because of the Spirit. Luke reports that when the day of Pentecost had come, they had all gathered into one place, Acts 2.1. Then in Acts 1.14, it says, Followers of Jesus are all united in their devotion to prayer, Luke 24.49. Jesus invites his followers to stay in the city until you've been clothed with power from on high. Being together in community, ready and expectant. This provides the way of the coming of the Spirit. So Pentecost not only is about Jesus is forever present with us, but <laughs> community is empowered to come together. The Spirit blows us in the direction of community building. The Spirit blows us in the direction of overcoming divisions and removing the barriers that separate us and bringing us together. Galatians 3.28 in Christ, there is neither Jew nor Gentile, slave nor free, male nor female, all are one in Christ. So wherever community building is taking place, the Holy Spirit is blowing hard. And at Pentecost, being in community, ready and expectant, it gives birth to the church. This is the day the church went public. It's the day the church goes public. Year after year after year. Every Pentecost, we commence. We begin. We are sent. We affirm our faith. We affirm our baptisms. We affirm our callings out to serve. And we become church. So Jesus had been raised from the dead, but nobody really wanted to talk about it at that moment before Pentecost. There were a few bold enough to mention it. But then at Pentecost, the Holy Spirit descended and things were brought to speech. People began to talk to one another. And then they began to talk to the people on the streets. So Pentecost means mission work, being let loose, loose in the world. The loosening of tongues to share our faith. The Holy Spirit shoves us from the safety of our locked doors in upper rooms and our fear into the struggles and the realities of the world's needs, of the sense of meaninglessness without Christ. So when we think about Pentecost and receive this person of the Trinity, this Holy Spirit, know that Spirit prompts us to gather together, to speak boldly about what Christ has meant to you, and assures us that we are fully present with God. So the question remains, do you get spirit? Yes, you do. Now what will you do with it? Amen.
Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty. Filled with the Holy Spirit, we join the church in every place, praying for the world that God so loves. Lord of life, you baptize your people with the fire of the Spirit. Grace your church everywhere with your visions and dreams, so that as we testify, all will hear the gospel and call upon your saving name. Hear us, O God. Your creating spirit renews the face of the earth. Bring to birth new life in the earth's land, forms, and waters. Awaken us from the slumber of neglect to show tender care for our home. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Your spirit swept over the waters and you created the human family. Now we are divided, scattered like dry bones. Connect the nations with the strength of the Holy Spirit so that all will live in hope. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Your Spirit sighs with every need. Guide us in honoring the dignity of everyone and opening our lives to others. Pour your healing mercies into the lives of all who need your care, especially Becky and Chad Smith, Abigail Caldwell, Mary Jane Dunn, Margaret Elder, and the survivors, friends, and family of those killed in the most recent school shooting. Hear us, O God. Your spirit has called and gathered this congregation into life in Christ. Help us in our weakness, teach us to pray, search our hearts, and intercede for us, your beloved saints, according to your will. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. By your Holy Spirit, you have called and gathered people from every nation under heaven. Gather with us all the saints, especially Kent Ryan, at the heavenly banquet that has no end. Hear us, O God. Your mercy mercy is great. Lord, we give thanksgiving to the family and friends of the birth of T. James Gable this week. And by your sure guidance of your Holy Spirit, O God, we lift up our prayers in trust and thanksgiving through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Please take this time to share the peace with one another.
Be known to us, O Lord, in the breaking of the bread, as you were made known to the disciples. Receive these gifts and the offering of our lives, that we may be your risen body in the world. Amen. The Lord be with you. God, you alone are holy, and you alone are God. The universe declares your praise beyond the stars, beneath the sea, within each cell, and with every breath. We praise you, O God. Generations bless your faithfulness through the water, by night and day, across the wilderness, out of exile, and into the future. We bless you, O God. We give you thanks for your dear Son at the heart of human life, near to those who suffer, beside the sinner, among the poor, with us now. We thank you, O God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to all to eat, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, blessed it, and gave it to all to drink, saying, Take and drink. This cup is the new covenant of my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering his love for us on the way, at the table, and to the end, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. We pray for the gift of your spirit in our gathering within this meal among your people and throughout the world. Blessing, praise, and thanks to you, holy God, through Jesus Christ, by your Spirit, in your church, without end. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And now come, let us eat. Now the feast is prepared. You may be seated. All are welcome to receive this meal of forgiveness. You'll 
Uh, the ushers will let you know when to come forward. You may kneel or stand along the railing. You'll receive the bread and then either dark liquid, which is wine, or light liquid, which is grape juice. And gluten-free elements are available. Just let your server know. Come, let us eat.
invite you to stand as you are able. Receive the blessing, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you and keep you always in his grace. Amen. Life-giving God, in the mystery of Christ's death and resurrection, you send light to conquer the darkness, water to give new life, and bread of heaven to nourish your people. Send us forth as witnesses to Jesus' resurrection, that we may show your glory to all the world, through the same Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. May be seated for announcements. things. Um, please note your announcements that are in the messenger and there will be a Spice of Life general meeting tomorrow at two o'clock. So if you're interested in that, uh, please join in that. Today we'll have uh, confirmation services at 11 o'clock for, for, for confirmants. You'll see their Favorite verses are in your messenger, and it is also last day of Sunday school. There's going to be a um, small confirmation reception between the services. Confirmants are going to come around 10 o'clock, so um, if you want to see them then, that's where they are. <laughs> and next week, we start our summer Sunday schedule. So 5.30 Saturday stays the same so every Saturday, 5.30, and then Sundays, um, there's some of these little cards, and you can put them on your refrigerator or whatever and mark your calendar up. Um, so on every other Sunday, basically, it will either be classic style, which is the 830 version of worship that you used to, and then the blended style is the 11 o'clock version of worship, style of worship. And so that's what that means, classic or blended. Please come to all of them. They're at 9.30 starting next week, which is Trinity Sunday. Did you have something? Because I have one more, but yes. I have a blessing. Blessing for Sarah? Yes. <laughs> you might as well come up. <laughs> okay. It's uh, with a little sadness that um, we find that Sarah Coleman is going to be leaving us. Um, after four years as the Alia uh, Choir Director and three years as the Worship and uh, Music uh, uh, Director for uh, Messiah, she will be leaving and moving to Washington, D.C. And uh, we will be continuing in music. She was music at uh, Hartville for several years, which meant everything from musicals to individual competition preparation. So. I just want to thank you for your time here. You've been a blessing to us. The choir was, is, uh, is always very happy with your choices of music and the fun that we have when you direct us. So, thank you very much. Um, I just want to say uh, thank you to the choir and to um, the congregation here. Um, you have all been very welcoming 
and you have had my, you've made my job a lot easier. So um, thank you to you, and um, it's, you've become kind of like a family, so thank you for being so welcoming and being um, that family, so thank you. Also, really quickly, I have an actual announcement. Um, the, sim the sending hymn, we're gonna do three verses, verse one, three, and five. <laughs> thank you. Um, and would you like to receive a, a laying on of hands in ascending? Because I have one written up, if you would. <laughs> and I'd like to invite the choir and, and any other bells might be seated or stuff, people that have worked with you to gather around you for a laying on of hands. And the rest of the congregation can just um, put a hand <laughs> up to lay out. Our music director, Sarah Coleman, is leaving us to follow another call in her life. Today, therefore, is a time to mark the ending of her ministry here at Messiah Lutheran Church, a time to look back, a time to look forward, a time for joy and a time for sadness, and it is a time to give thanks to Almighty God that Sarah has um, given her gifts to us and affected our lives. For everything there is a season, a time to go and a time to come. Yet the Spirit blows where it will. And for those who are led by the Spirit, they must follow. God has blessed Messiah with Sarah's service. She has shared her talents and gifts, inspired and led our worship, assisted us in our service of praise and thanksgiving, given us a glimpse of the beauty and glory of God through music. With joy and sadness, we mark and celebrate the ending of her ministry here with us. So in thanksgiving, let us pray for Sarah and for our life together. Eternal God, we thank you for Sarah and for our life together in this congregation and community. You have led her by the Holy Spirit to serve your people in this place, to build up your church and to glorify your name. We have worked in common for the sake of the gospel. Together we have sung your word. Together we have broken bread and given thanks. In thanksgiving, we praise you for raising up faithful servants among us for the ministry of your church. And we pray that Sarah may continue to exemplify in word and deed the gospel of your son. Grant that we with her may continue to serve you in the church on earth and be brought to rejoice in your kingdom forever. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And scripture tells us that endings are only new beginnings. So go now and do God's will. And as you have been a blessing to us, may you be a blessing to others. And may you always know God's peace. Amen. Thanks. So, may God who has brought us forth from death fill you with life and great joy. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Guided by the gospel, we welcome all to worship, make disciples, hunger for ministry, nurture youth, gather resources for growing ministries, offer healing and care to all in need. 
Go in peace. The Spirit sends us.